Coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next t-shirt model game tutorial. Sorry for not releasing this sooner. I did promise to release it a, a few days ago but um, something came up and I wasn't able to actually create it. So sorry for that. But in this tutorial, now we're going to be learning about, uh, we're going to be creating the gameplay screen and we're going to be adding in map elements and player elements. Now, I know a lot of you guys are antsy and you guys really want to get into the map editor. But what we have to do is we have to develop the player class, and we have to develop the map class, and we have to figure out how we're actually going to load the map, right? So once you know how we're going to load in the map elements, then we can create the top map editor so that whenever we save our maps, we can save it in the correct format for loading in our game. So sorry that we got to make those extra steps but we have to do that in order for it to be more efficient for us in the in the future so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a brand new screen and the screen is going to be called the gameplay screen so uh in this gameplay screen we're going to make it public and uh the oh yeah and sorry for the change of font uh if you guys want to know what font I'm using uh, let me just check this out for you okay I don't even remember which one it is but a lot of people ask me which font I'm using and um, yeah so I'm using Monaco that's the font I'm using uh, size 9 so if you guys ever want to use that you can use it um, I've tried out a bunch of different fonts but I just like the way it looks um, if you guys feel that it looks kind of off I'm sorry for that but I that's the font I've decided to use. Um, so we're including the XNA framework. We have the content and we have the graphics. Okay, so we're gonna have to inherit from the game screen class. And uh, what we normally do, we're going to override each of the classes. So let's do that. And voila, so we got these stuff set up. The gameplay screen is just gonna run the gameplay. Um, it's not gonna do anything really special. It's not gonna really do anything until we actually incorporate a, a player class or something like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna make a player class just because uh, it's fun when you have a player on the screen and you can move the player around and so on and so forth. Uh, for now, normally what I would do is I would create an entity class and then I'd inherit from the entity class and um, and so I'd have a player I'd have a player in the enemy class and they would both inherit from the entity class. But for now, we just want to get something on the screen, and so we can add in that functionality later. It will be pretty easy to transition, and uh, I guess we'll have content in there and we'll have graphics. So we're gonna have the same classes that or the same method, sorry, that every other class has. So we have load content, unload content. We have update, and we have draw. Now, before I continue, what I want you guys to do is if you guys want to pause the video now or, uh, yeah, I'll tell you to pause the video now just in case you uh, forget um, later on in the tutorial, but there's two main types of movements in, in RPG games. There is uh, regular movement and there is uh, tile-based movement, like the time-based movement and tile-based movement. Whichever one you would like to do, um, just comment below tile based movement means that like you will move like 32 by 32 pixels at a time and um an example of that is say like a pokemon game or something like that um and free form movement or time based movement whichever one you want to call it is just like moving freely based on the speed that you set it at um so that is up to you whichever one you guys want to use um, another thing is that uh, when we were doing when we're doing mapping, I would just throw it out there. Somebody was saying that they wanted to learn isometric mapping. Um, I really wasn't planning on doing isometric, right? As I've never really delved into it all that much. But I I 
I will put that up for consideration. So if you guys want to do some isometric mapping rather than uh, regular, uh, rather than regular mapping, then just let me know that I will see what I can do. I'll see if I can do it or if I can't do it or if it will be too complicated or not for me to teach. But just let me know whichever one you guys want and then I'll try my best to incorporate it. So anyways, to begin the player dot load player load content. So uh, we can load all our player elements from a from an XML file if we want to. So that's what we will do. So what we want is we're going to have an image. So for the player image and um, you know what? That's all we'll have for now for our player. If I forget something, then then I will incorporate it later later. Sorry. Um, we do want to, if we're doing, you know, you know what, we'll add this in right now. So we'll add in a vector to call velocity and it will help out with the movement of the player and such like that. And especially for doing, uh, especially for doing tile based movement, this is going to be an important factor right here. So once we load in our content, uh, there's nothing, nothing much we're going to need to do. Right now, we're just consider our velocity equal to vector to zero. And in our unload content, we'll just make a call to image dot unload. And in our update method now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take in some controls and so on and so forth and just move our player across the screen. So we're going to say if input instance equals key down, not key pressed. We want key down because we want it to be continuous. And before we even continue, we have to include the input framework, input class of the framework, input namespace, sorry, uh, the XNA framework. And so uh, we're going to say whatever keys you want to use. So I'm just going to use the arrow key. So if they press down, we're going to say velocity dot y is equal to and we don't even have a move speed so we'll add in is we'll say public float move speed and we'll say equal to move speed times float game time dot lapse game time a total seconds and we'll say else if they click keys up then we'll say velocity dot y equals to move speed times should be equal to negative move speed times float game time dot elapsed game time total seconds and this should be pretty straightforward for you if you don't find this straightforward then I would advise you to look at some of my previous tutorials I believe on moving sprites or whatever I don't really remember what it's called but um, I advise you to look at those and they should really help you out so we'll see velocity if they press the right arrow key we'll say move speed times float game time dot lapse game time on total seconds else if input manager key down keys left velocity equals a negative move speed time float and so on and so forth so one thing that we're gonna have to do though is we're just gonna say else velocity y is equal to um, zero and we're gonna say if this should be changed to if So with the way it stands now, um, we'll be able to do, um, what's going to happen is diagonal movement is going to be incorporated. If you don't want to do diagonal movement, then uh, what we can do is add the, at the top right here, we'll say if velocity.x is equal to zero, then we can do this. And then um, we don't want to put else if we want to put if. So we'll say if velocity y is equal to zero
then voila. The reason why we don't want to put else if is going to say that if velocity x is equal to zero, it's going to do this, and we're going to say but else if else if it is um else if velocity is greater than zero, then it's going to run this. But if um with that being said, this function th these these like these this code right here, sorry, this code right here won't ever ex execute because we need to execute this code in order to set a value for velocity. But if we never actually, get, if we say like else if velocity is greater than zero or whatever, then we, or less than or not equal to zero or whatever, this code is never gonna execute. It's never gonna execute because by default velocity is set to zero, velocity x is set to zero. Or, yeah, so basically, um, that's how we have to do it in order to be able to execute both sides of the code. So what we're going to do is once that's done, we're going to say image dot position plus equals of velocity. And uh, so that will add our velocity, our velocity to our position and we'll be able to move across the screen. And then we'll just say image dot draw and we'll draw that to the screen. So, with that being said, let us try and load that in. Well, first we have to actually make a, an XML file. And uh, so I'm gonna create a new folder, a new folder, and I'm just gonna call it a gameplay folder. And let me just check how much time I have left, okay. So, we're going to add a new item uh, XML and we'll just call it player player.xml add that in and so we'll put player in there we have our image we'll set the path uh, the path for our image will be in I guess we'll put in, in a gameplay folder gameplay slash uh, player something like that okay also, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll load the player image like so, and we need the move speed. So we'll say move speed. Did I spell it like that? Yep. So move speed is equal to, let's just say 100 for now. And last, well, velocity gets set to uh, default value, so we don't really have to worry about that. So we load in our image, we load in our move speed, and that should be pretty basic for now. So what we need to do is actually have a player image. So uh, I guess we'll just create one quite quickly. Okay, so I got the web browser open, and we're just gonna say, we're gonna type in Famitsu Sprite Generator. And uh, this is just a quick spreadsheet generator so you can uh, create a sprite. Um, create whatever you want. I don't really care. I don't know, it's, it's taking long because of Camtasia, but whatever. Just give him blue hair and you click download it and you want to download it to your project. So C sharp projects. Um, there it is. The content and I don't really have a gameplay folder yet. So what I'm going to do right here, go back to here, add a folder, and we'll call it gameplay. And so should be there now, and we'll just call it player. And so what we're going to do, just say add existing item, click gameplay, load in our player. So our player is loaded, and so let's see what we can do with this. So what we're gonna do is, um, we're just gonna say, we're gonna make an instance of player in our gameplay screen, and uh, I guess in our load content, we'll just make an XML manager to player, player loader, something like that. And we're gonna say that player is equal to player loader, dot load and the path to our XML file is load slash gameplay slash player and 
So I don't know if we have to put the extension. I don't really remember, uh, but we'll we'll see. So we'll put that in there, and so it's gonna load our player elements. We don't really have anything to unload, but we'll call that. We'll make a call to player dot update, and we'll make a call to player dot draw. Now don't run this yet, cause you won't be able to actually see it because we're not on that screen. So what we're gonna do is in our menu. Uh, for title menu I guess let's open that up so we will switch our link ID when you click new game we're gonna change that to gameplay screen and so when we run this let's see if it actually will transition to our gameplay screen and we get to see our player change from splash screen we click new game and we get nothing so we get an error so it could not find the player. So I have to put the extension in it. Okay. So lesson learned. So player.xml. Let's run this. And so if this really gets annoying going through the screens, because it could get annoying after a while, right? Uh, did not accept null. No. Oh, yeah, I made a stupid error. So... In our player dot in our player class, so we have to make a call to image dot load content. And so, like, if that really gets annoying transitioning to the screens and stuff, you want to go to your screen manager class. And by default, where do we? Yeah, instead of changing it to splash screen, setting it to splash screen, we'll just change the gameplay screen, so we'll run it right away for testing purposes. And so it says there's an error in the documents and the, oh, because there's no document for our gameplay screen. So that is a, yeah, there's no document for our gameplay screen, so that's a problem. So what we'll do, uh, what I'll do quickly is in here, we'll just click title screen because the way it's set up in our in our screen manager class it's set up so that it loads an XML file and so on and so forth but uh, let's run this again wow oh because the title screen doesn't even have what an XML file uh, I guess we can rearrange our code or just start from the splash screen. I don't really feel like rearranging the splash the code right now, so we'll just load from the splash screen. So we click new game, and we get this error again. So let me just check out what exactly is going on, and then um, I'll rerun this. Rerun the. Actually, I believe I actually believe I know what's going on. And let me see. Yeah, we load the player, but we don't even call player dot load content. Sorry for being for making these stupid errors. So we got that. Click new game. Now we've got our player that we can move across the screen. So voila, we got this right. It doesn't do any animations. It didn't do any of that stuff. Uh, the reason why we don't have any animations included is because we don't have any sprite sheet effects. So...